Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Buzz Lightyear Alpha Suit, which is basically the main suit that you're gonna want for a Buzz Lightyear figure from this new turd of a movie, because it's what he looked like in the original Toy Story movies. Uh, and that's probably why they made this particular look, and I'm guessing they're gonna make other stuff too, but who knows, you never know. Uh, this might be their best figure in a very long time. This is basically how I would have wanted the Iron Man figures to be built. They were way too over, like the MCU ones. Those were over-engineered and usually didn't pose all that well. This guy poses really well and is fairly basic engineering, and it's almost like that's how you should always do it. But this figure has a lot going for it, so let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands to the top of the head, not counting the dome, because that wouldn't be for scale purposes, about six and an eighth inches, and that's going to make him roughly, I will just say 15 and a half centimeters, that's pretty close. And it's not that big, but let's go ahead and compare it, just to see what it looks like against the best Marvel Legends figure. He's just slightly shorter, so I think they're probably close enough that you could put them in the same collection if you wanted to. Okay, now... Question of the day. Did you see this movie and did you like it? I have not seen it. I don't plan to. I wasn't interested in the first place and then I heard that it was terrible. So I'm just not interested in doing that. But you guys can let me know how you feel about it. Second question of the day. How do you like this new look for Buzz Lightyear compared to the original very toyetic one? Um, I get that this is the movie that the toy is that the original Toy Story toy is based on so it doesn't have to match exactly But that's not what I'm asking. I'm just asking how you feel about this look I personally think it's really cool I like the proportioning a whole bunch and it has nice de nice details and it looks nice Okay, so on that note, let's talk about the aesthetic This is easily one of Bandai Japan's best looking figures that I've reviewed at least I know their common writers are packed full of details and stuff, but Tiger and Bunny also but these, this one, recently anyway, this is one of the best. The mostly matte finish is really nice. I think it's something we don't see very often, or at least not often enough. The detail work is exquisite. I'll get it as close as I can with keeping it in focus. You can see the light year, light year name and then the logo there, and just the little paint details are all super good. The only thing that really stands out to me is they have a little bit of the white eye paint down on his bottom eyelid. Obviously not a huge deal, but even then, the shading on the face looks wonderful. The two-tone cowl, that's actually a different purple in a matte finish compared to more of a satin finish, looks really nice. Even on the back, we have excellent, excellent detail work. Very, very good looking figure. They nailed it. It looks phenomenal. Proportioning is good. Sculpts are great. Paint job's definitely good enough. Even the silver up here around the collar. That looks super clean. I mean, it is super clean, it looks great. This thing's fantastic, and the accessories are painted just as well too, so. Uh, aesthetically speaking, 9.9 .9 out of 10. The eye paint is a little weird on both heads, but other than that, it looks damn good. All right, so. Um, let's go ahead and get into the accessories. As far as the heads go, we do have the uncowled head, which is the one that comes on them in the package. And it looks really, really good. And then we have the cowled head, which does come in the package. And it looks really, really good. For me, I'm going to go no cowl. You got a third question of the day. Cowl or no cowl? For me, definitely want the cowl. All right, let's talk about the hands. We have the two fist hands. Then we have two pointing finger hands, two trigger finger hands, and two secondary type gripping hands or whatever you want to use them for. Uh, I think that's good enough. That's fine. Uh, we do have his jetpack backpack thingy that on his back you can just remove a little chunk and then this pegs in and it looks super good. This has so much paint and detail on it. I love it. Um, it also, the little round part on the back, you can pop that out and connect a display stand to it. It doesn't come with one, but you can do that. And the cool thing about the backpack is the little wing thingies pop off and then you have the open wings. So that's a nice touch. If you want to have him do his falling in style, you can do that. Uh, I guess I should have mentioned with the heads, we do get the dome, which you already saw. That's very nicely done. And for other accessories slash weapons, we get his pistol with a little clip that holds the pistol onto his thigh. That The thing that's on the thigh pops off and the clip replaces it, so that's cool. We get the wrist blaster thingy that just slides on. And then we get his little beam sword thingy that snaps onto his back using its own clip where it replaces another chunk on his back. So plenty of options there. You get lots of things and they were even nice enough to include a clip to help him in his flight pose if you wanted to use one of the Tamashi Nation's display stands that he doesn't come with. 
So I think that's a really good spread of accessories. Uh, the only thing really you could get more that would be reasonable, I think, would be like another expression on his face or something like that, and then the display stand. So I'm gonna still go nine out of 10 for accessories. That's a good spread. It's plenty. You have all of your key options that you're gonna wanna have, so. Very pleased with that, and the execution on those is wonderful. Okay, articulation time. We have a double ball pegs. The neck to head connection is a double ball peg, and the neck to body connection, I think that's just a single, yeah, just a single ball peg. But that just goes to show, all you need is double ball pegs. They say all you need is love. I'm gonna say you need two balls and a peg. All right, moving on, we have a ball peg for the shoulder. I can't quite tell if it's just a, f like, well that's not good. That's not supposed to happen. That's what happens when you pull <laughs> really hard uh, and, and you pull it off. But, so I think what it is is it's an actual butterfly joint in here. That's this piece right here. I don't think that that's a floating cap. It felt kind of like it, but I think that that's an actual butterfly. And then you just have the ball peg that is part of the hinge itself just moves around on the butterfly joint. That's what it seems like to me. And I'll show you the range in a second once I'm done explaining. Then you do have your ball hinge that I'm talking about right there, which gives you your swivel and your ball peg connection. And then the shoulder pad is on this slip joint type thing. So it goes up like that and then it pops down like that. I'm gonna have to do something about that when you bring the arm up. So the shoulder pad stays in place. It's so much better to do the arms like that than the way they did for Iron Man. Um, this, I guess, pops off more easy than I would like, but it's not like it's busted or loose. Maybe I just pulled it off and then didn't peg it in all the way. But this is like a good way to do the shoulder pad. It's not super complex, and it works. It looks really good. You get your full rotation, no problem. You can raise your arm up, no problem. At any angle, you have that shoulder pad right where you want it. So I like that a whole bunch. Bicep swivel is unaffected by the shoulder pad, so that's good. Is everybody else having this problem? Is this a Naruto situation where the arm pops off? It feels okay right now. Nope, it just pops off really easily. Huh, we'll see if the other side does it in a second. Double jointed elbow. Well, let me get this like this. Double jointed elbow gives you really good range. No problem at all there. And then the wrists are on little ball hinges. So that's good, that's fine. Little tiny joints. So I would, a little bit more would be good. A little bit more meat in there, but you have decent range as a result, so that's nice. Let's see if this arm pops off as well. Yep, so the arms pop off way too easily. That's a bummer. Um, that's not good. So, <laughs> it's not like they're falling off on their own and that they're not loose. So that's a saving grace, but they definitely pop off way too easily. Okay, for the torso, it feels to me like it's just a single ball peg but you can lean him really far forward on just that single ball peg and really far back. Good range, side to side is as far as you can go without it bumping. You get rotation, so that's perfect. That's as much, much range as you could possibly want. Uh, for, the lower, for the lower abdomen, you do get that ball peg that gives you all the range you want, but there is also a hinge built into that to help him to lean even more. I'm not sure how effective that really is, but it does, it does lean really far, so can't complain about it. His really, really good range there. Now for the hips, it's kind of like a ball hinge, but it's more in line with like the Dragon Ball figures or the Kamen Rider figures, where it's just a hinge that lets the leg go out to the side. It's kind of its own thing here. But you get full on splits, no problem, no loose joints. Bringing the legs forward, no problem at all, better than horizontal. Going back, you get a little bit of range, that's fine. The thigh swivel is obviously down here. And it works really well, like everything in here works so well and it's so simple comparatively speaking, especially with the Iron Man MCU figures. Double jointed knee, it has a little bit of thickness and that's fine, I think it's enough. It's not anywhere near as skinny looking as the Iron Man figures and his legs aren't super thick. They're a little thicker, but still it works. Then for the ankles, we have a couple of hinges and ball pegs built in. So you can do that, which isn't like super helpful. But you don't really need to do that, but you can use that hinge and that ball peg to give you a decent range going forward, decent range going back, you get a decent enough ankle rocker. Like this part's hard plastic, so it's a little bit limiting, but the foot moves around pretty well. And then lastly, you have a toe hinge, which is stiff and works and it's in the right place. It's a little gappy, but it's functional. So I think I've covered all the joints. There's a couple things that are a little hard to spot if you're not really looking like the hinge for the abdomen and whatnot, but it works really well. This guy poses well and looks good. I'm gonna give this guy's articulation rating a nine out of 10. 
It's pretty darn good. I don't like that the arms fall off too easily, but they're not falling off on their own, so I'm not gonna knock it too hard. But it's a pretty dang good release. Uh, I don't know if he was pearlescent or anything, like had any metallics on him in the movie. That would have been nice if they could, if, like, if it wasn't in the movie, then I can't fault the figure. But it looks to me like a little bit of metallic, but it looked really good on this guy, other than the silver. Anyway, that's a side note. This is a really good release. Super, super strong. Articulation's really good. Sculpt paint, really good. Accessories, really good. Easily top figure of the year contender. Easily. One of the best ones I've looked at in a long time. So, time for the final rating. I'm gonna give this guy, just gonna go right to it, a 9.5 out of 10. It is really, really good. The arms falling off is a bother. I don't like that and it's hard for me to not weigh that a little bit more heavily. But it's still a 9.5 out of 10, strong figure. If you were thinking about getting it, get it. It's really good. It's gonna pose well, it's gonna look good. Other than the arms falling off, which sounds terrible. It's not as bad as it sounds. You saw they're not loose or anything, so I don't mind that much. But other than that, it's exactly what you want it to be. So I definitely recommend it. There it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. That's fine, too. If you want to share the video, I would appreciate it. That's super helpful for the algorithm, you know, the almighty algorithm on YouTube. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos every day but Wednesday and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. In the meantime, keep collecting.